Hello, Les Lancaster here again. Um, it's very good to be able to join in this uh, this uh, roundtable on the challenges to transpersonal psychology from science. And uh, I show you this slide here. Just uh, got the title, but also my contact details. So if anyone wishes, they can certainly get in touch with me. Um, I run some programs, postgraduate programs online in transpersonal psychology and consciousness studies through ITA professionals. So the contact information is there if you want. <clears throat> well, what are the challenges? In a nutshell, in a nutshell, the challenge for transpersonal psychology is to bridge the divide between the success we have at a popular level, the divide between that and the acceptance of transpersonal psychology as a discipline in a more academic sense. Transpersonal psychology addresses some very central issues recognised in our culture. I think uh, the way we are able to explore our spirituality, to engage with practices that bring us uh, a more enriched way of being, and these practices have always been there within the spiritual and mystical traditions, many people are interested in these approaches. And in conferences like this and other events that I've been involved in, there are always many people interested. At an academic level, so I work in psychology, uh, I'm associated with a number of universities, and the reality is that we, transpersonal psychology does not have a high profile. So the challenge is not simply a challenge in relation to science, uh, that's the topic of this, this uh, round table, but I want to make a broader point. The challenge is about our acceptance as an academic discipline. Maybe the issue with science is that a lot of people in the name of science are not really keeping up with what is happening in the world of science. Uh, obviously in the areas of quantum physics, for example, I think everyone knows, you know, things are not clear cut. That we live in a world which seems to be ruled by some very quirky, strange phenomena. And when we say that transpersonal psychology is, for many, it's a science, then we have to accept that our understanding of science and the methodologies we use are not the same as might have been the case 20, 30 years ago. And I think there is a, a conservative tendency in science. That's a problem of science. That's not our problem. In the name of science, most assume a physicalist paradigm, meaning that the only reality is what you can observe physically. That's the way science works. Transpersonal psychology recognises the importance of working in that scientific way, but it is the case that limiting ourselves to a simplistic physicalist paradigm cuts off most of the phenomena we are interested in. So there's the challenge. And my response to the challenge, well, there's a number of responses. One is to really understand the complexity of what science is and how it's changing. I've just referred to that a little. Another response is to recognise what it is to be a discipline in the academic sense and to consider where we may be falling short. Uh, and in, in a nutshell, um, I, I would say uh, it's not so much that we're falling short, but that we don't always make our case sufficiently clearly and strongly. Let me 
begin by simply stating my view of what transpersonal psychology is, where it stands as an academic discipline. Uh, and then I'll take some examples and we'll, we'll work through the point. So, transpersonal psychology is the, the academic discipline which addresses the range of approaches that, in, that address the nature of consciousness and spiritual um, ideas and the nature of mind. Transpersonal psychologists need to engage with the spiritual and mystical traditions that are humankind's heritage. At the same time, <clears throat> we need to recognise the way in which science operates. Science is about applying a particular methodology. And so, for example, my background area of neuroscience over recent years the methods have been refined incredibly on the back of intense technological advance in the area of spiritual and mystical tradition traditions there is equally refined approach to methodology but it's introspective so for a buddhist who has been practicing for uh, 10, 20 years, that person has a refined way of introspecting on the nature of consciousness and the mind. So we need to bring both of those together. So very technological approaches to what's going on in the brain, using MRI, using different uh, magnetic resonance approaches and so on, EEG, etc., Bring that together with the, the first person approach that has been developed strongly within the spiritual traditions. And we need to recognize that science advances through the use of models. When we say that we understand something, what it means is we can model it. So if I understand memory or perception, psychological functions, then it means that I have a model to understand the processes that are involved. Now, one of the areas that I've written quite extensively about is the relationship between spiritual or mystical maps and scientific, especially psychological models. So in the spiritual traditions, we have no end of maps. A mandala is a map. Uh, the tree of life in the in the Kabbalistic tradition is a map. These are maps of the nature of reality, and they are ma maps of the nature of mind. It's not always understood fully, but from you know in depth study, it becomes clear. So we can refine our models of psychological processes by paying due attention to the kind of maps and models that we find in, in spiritual and mystical traditions. In a nutshell, transpersonal psychology can respond to the challenges by showing the way in which it has a distinctive approach. I want to give an example. There has been a huge interest over, over recent years in meditation and mindfulness in particular, the, the particular form of Buddhist uh, meditation practices, as it has been, uh, as it were, translated into secular ways. Um, if you look into uh, the research that's been conducted, it's been an avalanche. Ten years ago, there was hardly any research in this area. Uh, now it's in the in the in the in the tens of thousands of research articles being produced um, over a few years, and as we look around, so we see that the use of mindful mindfulness practices 
has found its way into all kinds of secular areas, into health promotion, into in, even into business. Um, and, and there is a lot of research, not only looking at things like where in the brain there are changes when someone is meditating, but also research looking at the, the effectiveness of practice in health, in well-being and so on. Now, one of the, the, the big issues, it seems to me, and, and I know this from talking to people very much involved in these areas, one of the big issues is that the, the people who are encountering these mindfulness practices within the secular, especially a Western context, they are not really being nourished, it seems to me, with the full understanding of the spiritual context in which these practices developed in the first place. I can illustrate that with, with, with an example. Um, there was there was a, 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 a gathering recently, a conference, at the uh, New York Academy of Sciences, a very, um, very respected body. It was about mindfulness, the science of mindfulness, uh, and included some major participants. John Kabat-Zinn, who many will know, has, has done a great deal to bring um, the attention of, 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 of uh, Western science to the value of mindfulness practices. And Richard Davidson, who worked w with the Dalai Lama in the, the Mind Life Institute, again, researching practices of meditation. The, the person um, discussing with them raised the issue about the spiritual nature of these practices. And uh, John Kabat-Zinn said, and I quote, I, I tend to steer away from the word spirituality. Uh, Richard Davidson said, I don't talk about spiritual because I don't really know what spirituality is. Now, it's not for me to judge either of those two. But I would suggest that if we spoke to the audience gathered here, then uh, I think most would say they do have an idea what spirituality is. And in any case, there's a huge contemporary literature, academic literature, which is addressing the nature of spirituality, how it relates to religion, religiosity, mysticism, and so on. And the fact is that many people who encounter mindfulness practices in the context of, um, say, health promotion and so on, really they need to know more about spirituality and they're not being given that. And the fact is, again, that, that the emphasis that is placed on short-term gain so many in, in psychology will talk about happiness and well-being, uh, human flourishing. These are terms that are used a great deal. And don't get me wrong, of course, I would love to see more happiness in the world. It's not that I'm against happiness, <laughs> for goodness sake. But when you study the mystical and spiritual traditions, you see that, that, that we're talking about ways of working, which may take years and years to bear fruit. We're not talking about short-term gain, we're talking about a way of being. Now, okay, I've made that point, but what is the real point? The real point is that in all this research that has been conducted about meditation and mindfulness, by and large, the psychologists and the scientists working on that, they only have a very shallow understanding of the parent traditions from which these, these practices are drawn. So the point I want to make is that there is a very important niche for transversal psychology, that, that we are able to bridge across these different areas, spirituality, mysticism and so on, and uh, and the research into consciousness, the brain, psychological structures, and so on. I'll give you another example, slightly different, to make us uh, the, the point I'm trying to make, and then I'll expand that point um, in the rest of this this brief presentation. I was recently 
asked to help out in, in, in evaluate a number of proposals for uh, work at a transpersonal psychology conference. And uh, there was a proposal for uh, a workshop investigating our connection with angels. Now the question is, what exactly do we mean by the term angel? Uh, now, I'm not someone who, who, in a kind of immediate reaction, will say, oh, this is nonsense, angels don't exist, we can't study such things. On the contrary, I do believe that there are presences which we can't immediately capture in a physicalist paradigm. There was a, there was a 12th century Jewish philosopher who wrote about angels, saying it, an angel is the thought that connects the divine to the human mind. Now, that brings in a psychological perspective. And the crucial thing here, and the point I want to make, is that we, we don't advance the course of transpersonal psychology just by trying to be spiritual beings and mystics. We need to engage with other approaches. And I'm going to make this point more with a slide, which you will see now. These are the parameters that I think we need to have in order to establish a discipline in the academic sense. There are different levels, as you can see. Uh, at one level, the way we might explain things, relating to the second column, at one level, the way we explain things is simply in terms of, of, of physical structure. So if we're talking about consciousness, we can talk about the neurons that are involved, the brain areas and so on. But if you thought that that's all there is to it, then I would say no, there are other levels. Now, if we were only operating at the top level, the spiritual mystic, we might talk about angels. And indeed, of course, the spiritual and mystical traditions have talked a great deal about angels. But that's not helping us. The point about transpersonal psychology is that it bridges across these levels. Now, that's a huge subject to go into, and you can see a lot of different columns here. It's not my purpose to go into detail. But just briefly, defining a discipline involves explanatory stu structures, it involves uh, approaches to methodology. In our case, it also involves how we relate to transformation. And again, without going into detail on, on the, the table, you can see, for example, someone come f coming from a Jungian perspective, where the, the, the explanatory structures would be systems of the psyche, for example, archetypes. And in that case, transformation, Jung's term for that was individuation. And of course, this is highly valued. Someone stuck in a, in, a, in, a, in a reductive physicalist paradigm doesn't see the value of such transformation. So it's incorporating these different parameters that helps us to understand what it is we need to achieve in setting up transpersonal psychology as an academic discipline. Of course, it goes without saying that uh, the crucial thing is to increase the amount of research, good quality research that is done. And again, I think very involved in supervising uh, doctoral research and so on to try and to try and move that forward. And then in the next slide, just simply making the point with these extra arrows, that transpersonal psychology is the one discipline that bridges across all these four levels. That's my claim. I think that's the way we meet the challenge. And if I move on, another slide here, which again has a, quite a lot of detail in it, and I don't want to get as bogged down, but the, the, the main thrust of this slide is to understand that when we study spiritual and mystical states and the practices that bring about those states, really in, in, from the point of view of the, of, of the traditions themselves, there are two aspects to the changes that are brought about. One aspect of that is that it's a training of the body and the mind in areas like attention and mindfulness. 
And cognitive neuroscience is a great discipline for studying those kinds of changes, and that's the research that we've seen exploding recently. But there's another aspect, and you see on the slide, the commonality, the, the, the hallmark of spiritual tradition is this point that we can connect, which is something, we, sorry, we can connect with something that is larger than ourselves. How we understand that, that's a whole nother session. We could spend hours talking about that. But certainly, in our, in our, in our natural state, we're in a kind of small state of consciousness, uh, an ego-focused, narrow, restrictive way of operating. The spiritual traditions want us to connect with something larger. Now, which discipline really studies this? Answer, comparative religion, the study of mysticism. This can inform our understanding of spirituality, of course. What you'll see in this slide is that linking the two, in my understanding, is the nature of the unconscious. If you read my work, you'll see that I don't like the term unconscious. I think that, uh, that the, the larger scale of mind is not un, it's actually deeply conscious, but it's a question of how we connect with things. But again, that's, that's another story. Um, the, 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 and the other point is imagination, studying the imagination, because we, the way we connect with something larger involves a deep and profound use of our imaginative faculty. Now, again, bringing it all together, the, the, the discipline that incorporates the study of these areas, as you can see on the slide, I'm saying is cognitive, as <laughs> I'm saying is transpersonal psychology. We can include the psychological, the, the neuroscience, and the study of mysticism. We live in a complex world. And one of the things we're beginning to understand about this complex world is that it's not particulate. It's not, everything's not separate. The paradigm that ruled in science for so many, uh, so many uh, decades, centuries, suggested this separateness to all things. Science itself now is moving forward beyond that, and transpersonal psychology is the branch of psychology that really engages with this participatory worldview, this idea that we are part of something very much larger. And that, I think, is the challenge. The challenge of bringing this I think I've had my time, so I'll bring this to an end. Uh, the challenge is to work with that broader perspective, the participatory, the collective reality, and to show that this can be studied in, 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 in ways that fit within the academy, within the intellectual worldview of the 21st century as a transversal psychologist. So that's it. I hope that challenge is something that you can discuss further. And I look forward to meeting you not simply on video, but uh, in 2015 at the conference where I, I shall be in attendance. Looking forward to that greatly. And I hope you enjoy the rest of this conference. Thank you. Bye.